Hi again then guys and welcome to episode 28 of Dirt Masters Unplugged, the fusion tuning series between Dirt Masters and Special Projects where we take a vehicle which you might not typically use for rallying or at least doesn't have a rallying counterpart on the game and we turn it into a custom from the ground up rally spec machine and in the case of this episode we're taking certainly not an obvious choice of rally car, the new shape Dodge Challenger SRT8 and turning it into kind of a rallycross style machine. Not too much power for it to cope with and also not too much weight as well. It's, it's reasonably heavy compared to some but for a muscle car and for a car of its size it's pretty good. Now as far as the visuals all I've done is painted it chrome orange from the McLaren MP4 we fitted the chin splitter and the special rear wing. So there's no real need to go over to the visual tuning garage for that. So we'll go straight over to the mechanical garage for the tune setup and then take it out to the dirt track to see what it can do. So for the mechanical setup on our Rallycross Challenger, obviously we've got dirt tyres or snow tyres depending on the circuit. As far as brakes, I've increased the front balance to 6, reduced the rear to 4. We've got the ride height on 100, front and rear, springs on 8, front and rear, dampers to 3 all round, anti-roll to 4, camber on 2 with neutral toe, we'll come back to the gearbox in a second. For the diff we've got the lowest initial torque, highest acceleration and a braking sensitivity of 20, so fairly loose overall for the steering on the diff. As far as the power, obviously this isn't a replica, so you can give it as much or as little power as you want. I've opted for around 500 horsepower to make it PP relevant and also to give it enough power to get the job done, but being a rear wheel drive car you don't want so much power that it's just constantly wheel spinning. So this does have an oil change, I've gone for a stage 3 engine tune, sports computer, race exhaust and sports cat and then reduced it down to 75.4%. We've got the downforce to the maximum and definitely the full weight loss package. Now as far as the gearbox, we've got an auto setting of 180, then for the individual gears we've got 4.5, 30, 50, 22, 50, 17, 50, 14, 25 and 1.2 with a final drive of 3. So now let's finally take it out to the rally circuit to see what it can do. Now as I've mentioned before in this series, you can never be completely certain as to how a rear wheel drive car will cope on rally circuits. Sometimes they turn out really well, sometimes they really don't, and in some cases it's actually rear wheel drive rally cars that are some of the worst in that regard, such as the Stratos and the 240 RS rally car. They're not awful, but they're nowhere near as good as you'd expect them to be because of that rear wheel drive. Now this car actually exhibits some tendencies of, and this may sound strange to say, but a train. One of the reasons why a train has so much grip is because of its weight. And the Challenger is similar. It's light for a Challenger, but it's still heavier than most of my other builds. So that weight helps to ground those rear tyres, especially on uphill sections. And although obviously, like any vehicle, it can wheel spin, the fact that it has that weight grounding the tyres and only 500 horsepower to deal with means that it actually makes a remarkably good rallycross car. The handling is also very smooth, and again, the weight of the car gives it a nice counterbalance around corners, but also means that the car doesn't really run away with you. It's very easy to keep the car under control. So if you decide to use this rally build for the Challenger, obviously I hope you find it fun and potentially competitive if you use it for rallying. And if you're new to the channel and would like to keep up with rally builds like this as soon as they're released, be sure to subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.